spiritual authority does come in this way. John Wesley, and I was looking at his life and a statement from it, and I've, I've knelt right where he would kneel and pray at his home in Epworth, uh, it, it, right in the London area. John Wesley traveled 250,000 miles in 40 years on horseback, preached 40,000 sermons, produced 400 books. He knew 10 languages. At 83, he was annoyed that he could not write more than 15 hours a day without hurting his eyes. And at 86, he was ashamed that he could not preach more than twice a day. He complained in his diary that there was an in increasing tendency to lie in bed until 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> That'll help us get to church at 10. Figure... <laughs> And then, and then the other thought is to enlarge your world by touching the world of others, by touching others. Tim Elmore, who will be coming in early uh, March, and he is the one that's the vice president to John Maxwell, and we'll have him as our speaker uh, in a Sunday morning in early March. He shared a, a concept that I thought was a pretty good one from something that we have probably all seen, and it comes from The Wizard of Oz. How many of you have seen the movie The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, God's not into movies. <laughs> Okay, um, just, and, and, and he talks about the concept that uh, he entitles the, uh, ch the ch title of the chapter is Dorothy's Way. And what it's about is that Dorothy obviously has her own needs. She's got to get back to Kansas. She's lost. She's trying to find her way home. She has her needs. She has her goals. But as she goes along, she makes it about others and not simply herself. Scarecrow, who doesn't have a brain, and so when she finds out he desires a brain, she says, come along with me. She encourages him that his dreams can come true and motivates him to go towards his dreams and empowers him to do that, believes in him, listens to him, and moves along till there's a tin man there who has no heart, desires a heart. She says, come along. Pretty soon you see that it's a team dynamic, it's a family, and the next thing you see is that there's the lion who wants courage, or however he says it, courage. You stepped on my tail. <laughs> she says, come along. That's just a reminder for those of you that forgot the best moments in the movie. But <laughs> and, and, and they make their way to the Emerald City, and as they're making their way to the Emerald City, they, they, they you know, go through so many things, tough things and everything, but they, but they face it together. But she's not alone. She's brought in others. They're not alone. They've joined with her. So when they get to the Emerald City and, and the great Wizard of Oz, who's intimidating to everybody, but Toto, the dog, pulls the curtain back, and here's somebody that looks quite normal behind trying to put across this imagery of being a great leader by intimidation. And in our world, so many people think, boy, a leader is one that barks it out and is so confident and everything goes right for them and they tell you what to do. In reality, Dorothy's the greater leader in the story if you really look at it because she brought people to their dreams and helped them realize their dreams. And Tim Elmore ends up contrasting the leadership styles of the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy. I don't know why he does that, but it, 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 he does it. And... and um, and really, it's a solid point that I think too many of us are walking through life alone. We're going after our goals, we're trying to achieve them, but we don't let others in. We're not about their dreams, meaning others, we're about our own. In Philippians, it says in the 19th verse, I hope in the Lord uh, Jesus to send Timothy, this is Paul speaking, to you soon, that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who takes a genuine interest in your welfare. I want you to catch that. Paul's saying, I don't have anybody else that's like Timothy. Timothy's unique because he takes a genuine interest in your welfare, not simply his own. For everyone looks out for his own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Well, listen to what Paul's frustration is here. He's actually using the word everyone. He's labeling his world right now. He feels like everybody's looking out for their own interests, but not the interests of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to stop in regard to this one scripture here to say this. There's a tie-in between being genuinely interested in 
the concerns of others and doing the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we want to really do great things for God and to align ourselves with Jesus, then what we ought to be doing is we ought to invest in others and have concern about others, just like Dorothy did with the ones that she was carrying along that day. In 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 24th verse, the Bible says, nobody should seek his own good but the good of others. If you will tap into God's heart for others and for those that are in your world, you'll help them reach their potential. And by doing so, you'll find that you reach yours. And we need to begin to see God as bigger today. I don't know what you're facing. God does. But God is bigger than you could ever imagine. Some of us are just simply uh, whittling God down until it comes to a point where we're able to say that we control God. We say how he works and what he says and what he does, and we build it into small solutions and two and three points, and that's it. God's bigger than that. He's bigger than any sermon. He's bigger than anything you can imagine. Now, what are you facing? Bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment. Whatever it is that you're facing right now, is your God too small? Do you desire to be blessed by God? Can you dare to believe there is a day where you can walk in the glory and righteousness and cleansed nature of one that walks in intimacy with God? Do you cry for that? Is it possible that you're a candidate to be wrestled with this morning? To be wrestled with until you know what it is to go from Jacob being interpreted con man to Israel being interpreted as a prince of God. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone here that is facing things right now where you must be big on the scene. And I pray that there will be a paradigm shift in hearts and in minds see you is so awesome that yes you can bless and it's not wrong to cry out for your blessing it's not wrong God to want to move in your favor and know what it is to be an always blessed God we pray bless us Lord that we might be a blessing to others and expand our tent and enlarge our territory open wide the gates so that we can know what it is to have influence beyond what we do in 2007 and influence for you to make a difference for you. God, I pray this in Jesus' precious name.